All right, everybody, how's it going? We're gonna try to do a little polishing today on the Viper. Um, I do have some more information about the history of this car, and I'll cover that in a video soon. I do have new tires for the car. As you can see, the R888s are spent. And the wheels, we've got a mismatched lug nut here on the CCWs, terrible. Got new lug nuts coming. Those are gonna get put on with the tires. I was able to find a local Dodge dealership that was a Viper uh, authorized service place so they can mount on the 13 inch wide wheels, balance, they've got the aligner rack, they can get that all done. So that's going in next Friday. Pretty excited for that, but as you can see, close to these wheels, they haven't had a good polish in some time. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to go ahead and I'm just going to give it a shot manually. With, uh, got some, just some regular mother's mag polish. And I'm going to just try with a microfiber towel for now to see what that does for the wheels. Um, I do have a buffer and I might give that a try. But I think for now we're just going to see what we can do by hand. They're not terrible, but there's a bit to be desired. Uh, the other stuff I obviously want to get done on the car will probably be last after everything mechanical. We've got a scrape here, some damage down low, scrape on the fog light cover. It's basically this whole front bumper cover, this will be the last thing I do. That's going to need repainted. Man, it sucks because it's scary. There's the stripes and stuff. I want it to all match perfectly, so I don't know. That'll be like the last thing I do. It's stressful to even think about. And probably before that, or at about the same time, but maybe before, because this is driving me crazy more than, or never. The uh, aluminum cover here, the rocker cover, got this damage here, and you can see the aluminum. Other than that, the paint show is great, but this, this drives me crazy. Really the biggest noticeable flaw of the car. The stuff on the front bumper is kind of no harm, no foul to me because of the car's history uh, on the track and things like that. But... Yeah, this one kind of drives me crazy, so I'm going to try to get that done soon. But for today, let's try to polish the wheels. If that goes well, I'm actually going to be removing this cover. You can see there, this will be a bit more aggressive. This is going to require some pretty aggressive sanding. And then bringing it, basically taking it all the way back down, bringing it all the way back up. But these are pretty easy to remove. These are about $800 to buy. But I think I can get... Uh, I can get pretty far on my own. Aluminum's very forgiving. It's going to take a lot of work, but it'll save me 800 bucks. Um, I did buy new Sashions. Don't know if that's how it's pronounced. There's a rubber piece here. You can see it's missing. There's a guy that reproduces these, Temple Performance Products. Got a set of those coming. Um, I got, see the short shifter there? Looks like cold water. So I got a stock knob and arm from a 2002 GTS, uh, which is not correct. It's like a ball type shifter. Um, it's not correct for this car, but it will go right on. No harm, no foul. It's removable. Uh, and I actually like that style. So that's what I'm going with. Plus, I can't find one for a 96. Let's see, what else have I bought? So I got the tires, the sashions, or whatever you want to call them. So you can see this one here. It's faded. Um, split here on the weather stripping. So yeah, those coming, that'll be great. I did get a new passenger door panel, even though that one's okay-ish. The driver's side needs work here. This part here has a broken panel. This panel beneath it is broken underneath. I don't have a new one of these yet because the panel I bought for the other side is from an 02. This is actually a textured, or sorry, not an 02, like a 98, 90, 97, 98. This is textured on that one. Well, these, this year was smooth, so I gotta wait and see. I'm probably gonna buy a textured piece, but I wanna wait and see what door panel I can find for the driver's side. It might already have that piece on it, so I'm gonna wait on that. As you can see, the door panel fitment is poor. Uh, so we're gonna get that straightened out. I also got some of the plugs here for these holes. These little plugs here. Found a guy that has some of those. I need to not obsess about it too much because it will be a money pit. This is just some of the low hanging fruit. My main thing is mechanically getting it straightened out. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and see what we can do with these wheels in preparation for the new tires. It's just something I can do today for very little money. So we'll, uh, we'll give it a shot and see what we come up with. 
All right, let's position this here so we can see a little bit, maybe. Kind of bring you right up to the wheel. Not sure how good the view is, but we'll do our best to get you right up close and see if we can't uh, get some polishing action going on here. You should be able to see some of this. We'll just we'll just try a little by hand. I don't have a little hope, or I'm sorry, I don't have very much hope that doing it by hand is going to do much. I think this is going to require equipment, but we're still going to give it a try. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub some of this polish in here. I did just wash these wheels um, in the last few days. That's the first thing you're going to want to do, obviously, if you're polishing is wash them. I probably should wash them again, but uh, do as I say, not as I do, I suppose. I'm just going to kind of rub this in. And you can definitely feel the cutting action of the paste here. Obviously not a super aggressive paste. This isn't really made for like heavy cutting. It's a polish, but you can feel the graininess of the paste. It's definitely doing a little bit of cutting in there. You probably hear it. Yeah, a lot of this is really like, it looks like the result of water spotting um, and just general neglect. The previous owner, admittedly, you know, one of the things I found out about this car, and I knew when I found it, and for the last, since 2017 or so, um, I can't say winter for sure, but it's been stored pretty much under a tarp. Yeah, I know. I know. But I'm pretty sure that's where it spent most of its time. That's where it was when I found it, and I saw pictures of it on Google Maps under a tarp, so I'm going to guess that was pretty much its home. Luckily, it doesn't appear anywhere I've inspected that any rodents or anything ever got in the car, but crazy to think a car like this sitting under a tarp. You know, in 30 or 40 years, we might joke about that as if we were talking about a Ferrari 250 or something. Just sitting in some guy's driveway under a tarp. Okay, we've rubbed a little in there. Worked it in pretty good. Take my microfiber, just kind of wipe here. See if we're getting any kind of luster. any improvement over what we had so I can definitely still see evidence of the uh, the water spotting look but it is a higher luster I think you can kind of see the shine there definitely opposed to like this area here you can definitely see this came around a little bit still some spotting in it though I think this is gonna take mechanical uh, Some mechanical uh, persuasion. Let me try just a little bit more with the microfiber right off the bat to see if working that in really makes a difference. What I'll do here is we'll just rub this in a little bit, flip it, wipe it out. Well, you know what? I can see it's an improvement, but I think the time spent rubbing this by hand would be in vain. Um, yeah, we need a, I need a buffer for this. And I, I don't really feel like throwing mag polish all over the paint, but just for fun, we can see this area is kind of dull. We're going to take some paste and just try it right there in this little spot and see if we get an improvement like that, just for fun. Go like right there. I'm gonna kind of work it in there. You know, working it in, just putting a lot of pressure into it. Yeah, that water spotting in there. You know, aluminum is sensitive to that kind of thing. You know, oxidization. So water on the surface, aluminum. I mean, it will. It'll stain it. ARP bolts all the way around on these CCWs. I know you might not be able to read it there, but. It's got the ARP logo. It's pretty impressive. I've been so cheap in my life, I didn't necessarily use ARP hardware on my engines, let alone on my wheels. All right. Let's wipe some of this off and see. You know, maybe a little, not a lot. This is 
I'm gonna need some something just a little more aggressive. I would have to. Okay, well I do see it there a little. I guess you can see um, from some of these angles. You can certainly see the improvement. Uh, that's a lot of elbow grease. I mean, I really, really leaned on it there in a very small area, but oh yeah, it's coming up. So let me. Let me do a little more work on this and then we'll see if we can uh we can see maybe i'll go get one of those mother power balls or something like that and really make it pop but all right let me uh here's what we're working with right now let me do a little work by hand and we'll come back and check it out okay so doing it by hand just wasn't working um so i went to the store I got a mother's power cone and a mother's power ball too, which is this unit here, big long extension. Um, I saw some pretty good results pushing on it hard with a microfiber. So I really think the cone's gonna do it and the power ball too. I think they're up to the task. Um, we will find out. So one more shot here, gonna get up close to the wheel and show you. These are some of the areas I kind of rubbed on, but generally I'm trying to catch the the flaws and uh you can really see it in there up in this area see all that there that's uh discoloration from just neglect and so we're going to try to really bring this up with a good angle and we're going to see what we can do um with this stuff i, I think it's going to come out really good but we'll just see um let's give her a whirl with the old uh tried and true old black and decker 20 volt here. Try to polish in this general area. Um, let's see if we can get angle where you can really see something. It's up there. It's fine. <clears throat> let's give it a whirl. I'm gonna take a little bit of this cream. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna rub a little bit on the cone at a low speed. Get a little on there. Now, if you're polishing wheels, just the only thing to be conscious of is make sure it's polishable. If you see a black residue come up, that means it's raw and it can be polished. If not, they might be coated, so you got to be careful. I probably put way too much of this on here, but we're just going to see um, what we get. We're going to go just kind of up around this edge a little bit. I'm going to start with a low speed and we'll see what we come up with here. Kind of go slow. We're working it in up around this edge. Now you see we're getting that black there. That means we're dealing with the raw aluminum here. What I'll be really curious about is how well this foam keeps its shape through use, because that's the real test as far as a product, um, how well it holds up. I'm gonna kick it right up into high speed here, I think. There's no reason not to. Get up around the edge there as good as I can. <laughs> seeing a nice black, kind of a pasty look here, and honestly, I think we're seeing some really nice results. I'm gonna just run up and down this a few times, and then I'm gonna grab the microfiber wipe and see what we got. Let's try it. 
that just a couple minutes there, a minute or two of polishing. Let's see what we got here. If we're getting anywhere. I don't know if you can see that. But uh, we're seeing some results here. Now I can still see some residual marks in the wheel. Like a water spot type of mark. But I think... Oh yeah, good lord. Not sure how well you can see that, so... Oh, that's great. Um, let me just see here really quick. If you look here, right, level of luster coming around to where we polish. I mean, hey. So you're coming around here, and then you're getting into where we polished, and that's night and day. That's absolutely amazing. So you can still see some of this, see that in the reflection there. So see some of the marks in there. So we're going to work on that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to work this whole wheel and then we're going to come back and we're going to take a look. I'll tell you how long it took and we'll see what kind of results we get and I might try the ball as well. <clears throat> okay, so here is, here's where I'm at. So this is not done. This is what I would call roughed in pretty good. As you can see, you know, it's it's a lot better than it was. But if you look, you can still see all the cloudiness. It's a lot of work getting in these areas. And so the, uh, the ball here, or the cone, this has come in handy a lot. The ball, for this particular wheel, not as much. Um, the biggest thing on this wheel seemed to be the amount of pressure you can apply. I mean, you really got to get after it with the pressure. And to the point where, I mean, I can do a lot of this. I can do all of this by hand. It's just a matter of how long would it take, right? So in these areas, there's still work that needs to be done. You can actually see the CNC machining marks, if you look, which is kind of cool. Um, it'd take a lot of work to get in here, so it's really good at roughing these areas out, but even still, I find myself coming back by hand. So, you know, there's probably some tools to this that I don't have. Now, on the camera, I can tell you this looks pretty good. It looks a heck of a lot better than the other side. It's still gonna take some work by hand to get it all the way there. I said in these areas, take a look, and I'll take one of the heavily, uh, we'll say, like really covered areas of compound here. You see this haziness here, right? Watch this. You really get after it. You really put pressure on it. You can, you can kind of bring that cloudiness out. It takes a lot and that's pretty much the deal so as far as how much time I've invested in this with the drill doing stuff by hand and then just trying to wipe it off kind of half-assed before showing you guys what I got I'd say probably 45 minutes in this wheel um, and that and that's me being right here like no brakes really going at it but again it's a good uh, two three four five footer you get close and you can just still see all those little imperfections and again like even that one there for example that's a good good example so you see that cloudiness there if I take this and work it really hard I mean I'm really leaning on it here you can you can really reduce that stuff you know sorry there we go see it's really clear right there. Um, you know, I might just end up grabbing the buffer, but the thing is it's like an eight inch wheel, I think. So it's it's good for large flat areas, but all it's gonna do is kind of just cake these with, uh, with compound. So honestly, the reality is a lot of this is gonna be done by hand. But the cone, if anyone's looking, man, yeah, no, it earned its way. Just roughing these out, it was really great for that. And uh, some of these other areas, one thing, really the right way to do this for anybody watching is take your wheels off because I've got goop caked in my lug nut um, recesses now I am getting new wheels put on or sorry new tires put on next week so I'm just gonna nicely ask the gentleman doing it to wipe the goop out of there but otherwise I would have to get it out it'd be a pain um, I mean you could probably blast it out of there with some pressure but um, yeah, there's quite a bit in there actually. I might take the hose to it and then dry the wheel back off. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the result. This is what you can expect on a wheel that was like mine with average skill level, about 45 minutes or an hour invested. 
Okay, so that wasn't quite the end of the video. Plot twist. I had a buffer. I didn't really think this was the application. This wheel I already did. This one I did with the buffer. Now, I didn't put quite as much effort into it as I could, but it still looks extremely nice compared to what it was. And I probably did the other three wheels in the time it took to do the first one. The back wheels were a little trickier because of the deep lip, but I can tell you the fronts look the same. And this one took probably 12 minutes. Oops, looks like I got a bit of crap left on there. Need to come back and wipe them off again. Probably took 12 minutes to, you know, 45 minutes to an hour for the first one. So best process in my opinion is uh, get out a buffer. Smaller the pad, the better for sure. But if you've got a broad flat area, and of course you're going to catch a lot of crap in the uh, in all the recesses, you're going to have to wipe all that out, and it, you just got to be careful. But yeah, I this could have been a one-hour job to polish these wheels uh, if I had just started with the buffer. So, all right, that's the uh, that's the end of the video. I think the Dewalt buffer saved me a few times, came in handy again. Um, bling bling shot. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're a hell of a lot better looking than they were. All right, that is all. Thank you for watching, and have fun.